Dear friends, welcome back to Data Analytics Talks. This is another session under the Data Engineer Learning Series. In this session, we are going to see how to create our first Azure Blob Storage. You know, Azure Blob Storage is Microsoft Object Storage solution for the cloud. The Blob Storage is optimized for storing massive amount of unstructured data. You know, the unstructured data is a data that does not adhere to a particular data model or definition. The previous session, we have seen the architecture of Azure Storage. If you have not seen, I would recommend you to do that before you proceed with this video. The Azure Storage platform includes data services like Azure Blobs, a massively scalable object store for text and binary data, it also includes support for big data analytics through data lake storage gen 2. We will cover in detail about data lake storage gen 2 in another session. And we have Azure files, a managed file share for cloud or on-premises deployments. Then there is Azure Elastic SAN, which is in preview, a fully integrated solution that simplifies deploying, scaling, managing, and configuring a SAN in Azure. Then we have Azure Queues, a messaging store for reliable messaging between application components. Then we have Azure Tables, a NoSQL store for schemaless storage of structured data. Finally, there is something called Azure Manage Disk, a block-level storage volume for Azure VMs. Each service is access to through a storage account with a unique address. Looking at the storage resources, a blob storage offers three types of resources. The storage account, a container in the storage account, a blob in the container. Look at this example, we have a dad storage account. Within the storage account, we have two containers. One is for pictures and another for movies. And under the picture container, we have multiple images, which is nothing but blobs. Under the movie container, we have movie files. A storage account provides a unique namespace in Azure for your data. Every object that you store in Azure storage has an address that includes your unique account name. The combination of the account name and the blob storage endpoint forms the base address for the object in your storage account. So this is an example storage account URL http colon slash slash my storage account dot blob dot core dot windows dot net and there are multiple types of storage account general purpose v2 blog blob and page blob and we can see that in detail and second resource is containers a container organizes a set of blobs similar to a directory in a file system a storage account can include unlimited number of containers. A container can store unlimited number of blobs. So every container will have a unique address. Here in our case, we have https colon slash slash my account dot blob dot core dot windows dot net slash my container. Then finally, we have blobs. Azure storage support three types of blob. Block blob, append blob, and page blobs and the blob also having a unique URL. It says my account dot blob dot core dot windows dot net slash my container slash my blob. So we explained this in the last session. So the storage account has containers and blobs and overall this has properties like access control, virtual network and firewall, encryption, a secure transfer required shared access signature, access keys, advanced threat protection, course, then hierarchical namespace, performance, account kind, then default access tier, lifecycle management, Azure search, CDN endpoint, custom domain, soft delete, and so on. So every storage account is created under a resource group in a location and it can support local replication and geolocation. Let's straight away go to a demo. We will try to create our first Azure Blob Storage. We have come to portal.azure.com. So this landing image may be familiar to you. Some For some it is not familiar. But 
as a quick guide you can see all the azure services you can consume as a consumer or as an enterprise if you want to see all the uh, services you may have to click on the more services link so it will take you to the entire azure resources available but i am just interested in creating the storage account so you can find a data lake storage gen 1 i'm not interested this at this point in time but you will come back to explain what is data lake storage gen 1 and gen 2 in another session so straight away we can create a storage account before that maybe you can just click and see what are the resources that are, you have already created so i click on all sources unfortunately i don't have any resource created in this account i have to create one so either you can go to a storage account and create one or you can go to create a resource or i will take this route i will click on the storage account yeah let's see what microsoft azure tells about storage account they create a storage account to store up to 500 tb of data in the cloud and use a general purpose storage account to store object data use a no sql data store define and use queue for messaging purposes and set up file share in the cloud so use blob storage account and the hot and cool access tiles to optimize your cost based on how frequently your object data is accessed so this is a description of a uh, storage account we don't want to care much about it i will straight away go to create a storage account let me click on the create button what happens it is opening a create storage account wizard so you can see multiple tabs basic what's the basic you are going to give the storage account name region performance redundancy and all i will go through each then explain it then we have advanced tab we have networking data protection encryption tag and review okay that's the final stage so let me go back to the basic azure storage is a microsoft managed service providing cloud storage that is highly available secure durable scalable and redundant this is again some description about the storage here we are starting we have the project details we are always creating a storage account for a project select the subscription in which to create the new storage account so you can choose a new or existing resource group to organize and manage your storage account together with other resources so first of all we should have the subscription option chosen and we will need a resource group and you know the resource group is the grouping of all the resources that you need for this project and uh, this is a kind of boundary where you can manage your cost per costing billing etc i would like to create a new uh, resource group let me create a dads as the new resource group that's uh, g that's at g that is a resource group let me give it as a dads rg resource group okay i named it as that's rg and uh, you know we should give a storage account name i will give us uh, that's that storage this is already taken then i can give that storage uh, demo that is available so that storage demo uh, storage account name is uh, available before giving the name you should there are some naming convention regarding the name so name must be unique across all existing storage account names in azure it must be 3 to 24 character long and contain only lower letters and numbers i can give only lower letters and numbers okay maybe i can give demo one so that is accepted where should i create my storage account you know there are hundreds of regions in my microsoft azure so if you want to see the regions you can see there are um, hundreds of regions in asia pacific europe middle east us asia pacific and uh, us and so on so we can choose the one which is nearest to us that is south india 
and we have the performance okay what should be the performance you know you can go for either standard which is recommended for most scenarios general purpose v2 account and we have a premium recommended for scenarios that require low latency i want i can choose for premium then we have different premium account types it can be blob block blob file share and page blob so you need to understand what is a block blob the best for high transaction rate and low storage latency then file share best for enterprise or high performance application that needs to scale then page blob best for random read write operations so we have different types of uh, blobs so that comes under premium account type then what should be the redundancy so i will only go for standard and redundancy is um, the data in your azure storage account is always replicated to ensure durability and high availability so you can choose the strategy whether it should be in locally redundant or geo redundant what is a locally redundant lowest cost option with the basic protection against server rack and drive failures recommended for non critical scenarios so always go for local redundant when the application is not that critical but geo redundant is intermediate option with failover capabilities in a secondary region so recommended for backup scenarios if you would like to uh, have a backup in another region for example you have your storage account in south india you want to have a backup in north india or central india then you can go for a geo redundant storage but it comes with additional cost evaluate the requirement and make use of the options i have given the details for the first tab then let me go to the second tab which is advanced give has lot of uh, options right so configure security settings that impact your storage account it ask you whether require transfer for rest api operations then allow enabling anonymous access on individual containers so if you want to give anonymous access to any container which that that you are going to create under the storage account you have to keep yes then default enable storage account key access this is required then default to azure active directory authorization in the azure portal that's also optional if you want to choose then minimum tls version so we have multiple versions 1.2 1.1 and 1.2 then permitted scope of copy operations so from where we want to copy data to this storage account it can be from any storage account from storage account in the same azure ad tenant from storage account that have a private endpoint to same version network these are options so based on these options only you are allowed to copy content from other locations then do we need a hierarchical namespace okay so hierarchical namespace complemented by data like storage gen2 endpoint enables file and directory semantics accelerates big data analytics workload and enable access control list acls i am not going to choose now because when we are going to detail the data like storage gen2 we will come back to the hierarchical namespace for now i leave it uh, unchecked then we have the access protocols then we have blob storage allow cross tenant replication then access tier so there are hot and cool i uh, you know when frequently accessed data and day to day usage scenario it should be hot and the infrequently accessed data and backup scenarios they call it as cool we know that when data is not frequently used that has to be moved into a cool blob storage okay then we have azure file then if you don't enable it won't be having the large file share options so all options are to be configured while we creating the azure storage account then we have the networking options so under network we have the network connectivity whether enable public access from all network then enable public access from select network or ip addresses disable public access and uh, use private access then network routing so that's are related to networking then data protection how do you want to protect your data so do you want to soft delete for blobs do you want to have soft delete for containers do you want to have soft delete for file shares if you enable them you can say within so many days it can be restored okay 
so it can be retained. Then we have the tracking options, enabling version for blob, enable blob change feed, then access control. Then we have encryptions, choose the relevant encryption for you. Then you can add some tags. Once you have chosen all the options, you can you have an opportunity to review that and uh, create uh, the storage account. This is creating a storage account for you. It takes a couple of minutes to create a storage account. As we have configured, this will be created under a resource group. That's storage demo one as a storage account is created. It's done. And go to the resource. We have created a general purpose storage account. So this is how when we create a storage account looks like. It has generic information and it says about the resource group, location, subscription, subscription ID, disk type, then performance, replication and so on. And the blob service, file service and uh, queue service and table services, security networking. If you have not seen a storage account, I think this is the typical storage account when it is created in Azure platform. And uh, now we have the essential information about the storage account, which is the resource group, which is the location, subscription, and uh, disk state, performance, replication, and uh, provision state, which is succeeded and created. And we have the other properties like blob story service, then file service, queue service, table service, and security and networking. These are the options that we have chosen while we were creating this storage account. So now, we, if you make a tour of uh, the left side menu, so you can see the overview, activity log, then the tags which we have given, then we have the diagnose and solve problems, then access control, if you want, how do you want to give access to this uh, storage account, then data migration, so do you want to migrate data using any tools, then events, then we have the storage browser and it, it shows you like blob containers, file share, queues, tables. So this is a browser. Then we have the storage mover. Then data storage is all comes under containers, data storage containers. You can create a new blob container. <laughs> So I can create a container. So this is the container. Then again, I can upload any number of unstructured data into this blob container. We mentioned that there is a file share. So you can create a file share. You can manage your queue messages by creating queues and uh, NoSQL tables. You can create a table here. We have the containers, file share, queues and tables under this storage account, then we can always configure the networking, then access keys. How do you want other third party applications to connect? Maybe for example, your data bricks needs to connect to the storage account. You have to create a SaaS tokens, SAS, that is shared access signature. Then you can give the required permissions, whether you want to give all the objects, all the containers, all server. Do you want to give all permissions, delete, full control or only just read, write. All settings you can create and they can create a Gensas token. It creates a lot of connection strings. So you can use any of these connection string, integrate this storage account with your, uh, with your application. Either it is a PowerShell or it is a Databricks or .NET applications. Then we can support the encryptions. Then you can also add the Microsoft Defender. Then data management, how do you need the redundancy. So we have not, we have taken only the local redundancy. If you, if I only want to make a geo redundant, so basically you need to go for geo redundant and it will save in another region. So we'll have a backup in some other region, right? We have one in South India and we have a copy in the central India. So this shows you like how geo redundant storage works. So I go back to the local storage. So it is not having a 
and duplicate region okay it all happens in one region then data protection then object replication then blob inventory then configurations then you can upgrade these two data like gen 2 so currently this is not upgraded say general purpose storage storage account then how do you want to resource sharing using course then we have the endpoints how do you access a blob in this storage account so i mentioned like say dad storage demo one dot blob dot core dot windows dot net to access the files we have dad storage demo one file dot core dot windows dot net if it is q we have q dot core dot windows dot net if it is a table it is a table dot core dot windows dot net and data lake storage will say dfs.core.windows.net and static website it will can connect to uh, web.core.windows.net for the exams you will have to remember some of the endpoints then diagnostic options then usage metrics then we have some automations like task uh, export templates uh, resource health and so this is all about a storage account and a blob uh, storage it is a matter of creating more of containers and uploading the unstructured data into these containers. Hope you understand what is all about a storage account. So I can see my resources under the recent. It has a resource group, the storage account. Hope this helps. Before closing, I would recommend you to go to Microsoft Knowledge Hub which is land.microsoft.com and find more about Azure Blob Storage. It will give you in-depth knowledge on the blob storage and the resources under the blob storage and the naming conventions and also it gives you an understanding about how to move your data to blob storage. We may be able to use AZ copy or PowerShell or .NET code to do that and you can find a lot of um, tutorials to do that, how to migrate data to cloud and how to design application for high availability. You can get a lot of samples, .NET samples, Java samples, then Python, C++, and Azure CLI, and a um, lot of how-tos. So this will really help you to have mastery over Azure Blob Storage. So good luck. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please share your feedback and comments. If you find it useful, Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe data analytics.